Blessings, beloveds. I am Sondra Walter. There were quite a few questions that came in after the last YouTube video about the earthquakes and the stargates and the Freedom Code activation. So I wanted to address some of them here, some of them uh, interesting, some of them a little off topic. But if this is something that you enjoy, then perhaps we um, should get into doing more like a bi-weekly video or something like that with your questions about ascension hopefully <laughs> more about ascension than some of this other stuff. But there were a couple of things that I wanted to provide clarity on because I felt that it would help the collective. So how do you know uh, or how do you receive clear guidance on travel and grid work? So my guidance is, um, and this is, this is addressed, this was like a long paragraph about um, receiving where to go and when. Uh, and there, there's a couple things that I should probably lay down as foundational. First of all, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> I'm celebrating my 20th anniversary of being an Ascension Guide this year. Uh, so that's, that's the first thing is uh, practice and in engagement. Uh, the second thing is I've been a contactee for a long time, since childhood but reactivated in 99. So my guidance and relationship with the higher realms, higher levels of my, my own self are strengthened and cleared by my own dedication to the ascension process. So that certainly helps. And then the travel and the timing usually comes from the brotherhoods and sisterhoods of light. When I say brotherhoods and sisterhoods of light, it can, it's not like a council -y type thing. It's my higher levels are deeply involved with that realm. So when things are about to unfold, there's, there's like a scan of who is available and who's the right fit, you know, right person for the right job kind of thing. And then Grid workers and gatekeepers will get the invitation. You'll start getting the nudges. You'll start getting the vision, visions. You'll start getting visitation by these higher realm beings, uh, indicating that there's going to be that something is is going down. That something's about to unfold. So for somebody like me who's been posting weekly. Uh, with these light intel updates about what's unfolding with the ascension timelines and the ascension process in general, it's it's a lot easier for me just because that muscle has been trained to receive that, to recognize what's going on. In this particular uh, activation, it felt a lot like the journey to Arkansas a few years ago before the election, when things had to happen in order for certain trajectories to unfold and things start closing down in your live stream. Like my house that I was staying in uh, before this occurred this year uh, was suddenly going to turn into a vacation rental. So, wow, no more house. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing, like all these things happening with these conferences and and a uh, different trajectory unfolding for my, my public work. And then the, the brotherhoods and sisterhoods and that's not just men, it's men and women, obviously. Uh, start knocking at the door. Uh, how would you like to do this? How would you like to do that? They start, start showing me maps. They start showing me crystalline corridor points. And that started happening back in April. So when I was leaving Sedona after our Sedona events in April, that started presenting already where it's like, you have to go through and visit Mono Lake. There was another brother who was present at one of my events who's like, I've been told to go Mon to Mono Lake. And we gave him certain stones to place because he was gonna actually paddle out to the middle of Mono Lake to do that activation. And then I found it really fascinating, you know, post activation, the information coming through on, on Mono Lake and how it's responsible for a lot of geomagnetic anomalies and has a record of that. So it's just interesting the way it unfolds. But beforehand, it's uh, trusting the signs as well as the direction. So if you're somebody who, say, doesn't have contact, is not having those experiences, 
but you're getting the guidance and you're starting to dream about it or see it in your meditations. Meditation, of course, key to, to having clear and direct contact is you want to keep yourself in that state of consciousness that can be open to receiving and connecting with higher realms. So that, uh, you, you just look for the signs. Look for the signs and start piecing it together. I always encourage all of my students to write everything down. So you're taking notes on your meditations because then you can start to piece together notes on, I have a gatekeeper journal. So you start piecing together the, the pieces of information and then for, for me, it's a very overwhelming experience. It becomes so overwhelming, the drive to go, the drive to be somewhere, the drive to put a certain stone in a certain place at a certain time or to go to a certain location becomes so overwhelming for me that nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And when you're dedicated to service, that, that happens too. Nothing else matters except service. You will get to that point in your mastery where the personal journey is somewhat secondary. I mean, of course, it's uncomfortable to be in the middle of the desert in, in summertime, but it is what it is. You're just like, so, so obviously, something is going on. And then when I spent three days on the mountain alone in my tent uh, beforehand with the, the last eclipse in, in July, it, it became blatantly clear because they start loading me with different codes and symbols and things like that. So when, when that's happening, it's kind of a, a sign like, oh, something with the, with the grids and the timelines is about to unfold. So you really need to listen and pay attention to what's going on. And that's, that's not just for gatekeeping and grid work, that's for your own ascension journey. Pay attention to the signs, keep a record, start piecing it together because the, own, the pieces of your own trajectory will start coming in very clear when you pay attention. And of course, you always get more information when you pay attention, start light grounding it, writing it down, and start doing the good work. You know, people are like, how, how do you know if you're a gatekeeper? Are you, are you gatekeeping? Period. Uh, do you know if you're a grid worker? Are you doing grid work? Period. I mean, that's, that's the highest level advice you can give right there. It's like, are you doing it? Well, do you have an inkling to do it? If you engage with it, how does it feel? If you're learning how to do gatekeeping or grid working, and you're, you're engaging with these things, how does it feel? Because it is an aspect of Gaia. You're working directly with Gaia, directly with the kingdoms and the elementals in those activations. So your connection with Gaia starts going into that Christ in that crystalline beingness where you're one. You are one with the grid systems. You're one with Gaia. You're one with the, the God source within, in that moment. Because it has to, you have to be clear and pure of heart and pure of intent. And when you consistently maintain that, you strive for it, striving for your own mastery of love and unconditional love, then you're in alignment with that unfoldment, the highest unfoldments. And you can't be swayed or pulled into anything that would be off track. Now, as a gatekeeper and a grid worker, if for some reason you had to pass on travel or something else is going on in your personal live stream, somebody else will get the, the next, the ticket. You know, it's like deli tickets, who's next in line? You said no, somebody else will pick it up. But when I see all of us playing musical chairs and we all move around, it's all DNA related because when you take certain DNA to certain parts on the grid, things happen. I left Shasta and like 10 gatekeepers came in that same week and we're not even talking to each other came in that same week, they're like, I'm a Jasta, where are you? I'm like, I'm <laughs> to the Mojave. It was, uh, yeah, we, we see it, you know, we see how we all work together. That's that unity consciousness thing in action. Okay, next question. Uh, in late June, early July, I felt a lot of anger and I couldn't sleep, almost like rage. Uh, why is that? Um, there, but just because of the trajectory shift and what was about to unfold, there was a lot of pressure uh, happening in the in the collective consciousness for us to make the move that was that was made on July fourth. Excuse me. <clears throat> so that uh, you know, a lot of us were in Avenger mode for like 
three, four weeks at a time. And I don't mean Avenger as in violence, I mean Avenger of love. Uh, but now you'll feel a difference now that that activation has occurred. Now you're probably sleeping a lot. You feel more tired, more worn out because those codes are now surging through the grid systems. So the whole anger or maybe fear that you felt prior to that activation was just the, the turbulence of, you know, so it's, it's stressful when you're going into the, that situation as a collective. Of like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is like a last stand kind of moment. Uh, but now you're probably going to feel sleepy as those codes integrate. So allow, allow that to occur and then get on with creating your highest trajectory in your own personal life stream. So you want to make sure that you're starting to get, get to back to busyness uh, as quickly as possible so that you can stay aligned with that higher trajectory. I am experiencing dip, deep bliss and I would like to know how to balance that with my personal life stream. Okay, so there is an ebb and a flow to these states of bliss and I'm quite familiar with that. There's, um, there's an ebb and flow to activation integration. Activation integration used to take us longer. Now it's very um, almost instantaneous. But for some of the larger activations, you can still have that very stimulating activation and then wow, integration. But it's not as crazy yo-yo up and down roller coaster as it used to be. But you need to follow that ebb and flow in your own life and make sure that you're not pulling into one side or the other too much. So sometimes people can use uh, an activation as, as an excuse to kind of stay in that state for a while. But the bliss states are so pure and so, I mean, unconditional love is a completely different state of consciousness. And it, it takes some, some getting used to because it does, you lose the denseness of the, of the memory and the thought forms of your, your old life and your old life stream. And mastery itself, it feels like a romantic melancholia, which is a state of mastery that they, uh, the masters actually used to induce that through high doses of melatonin to try to keep themselves in that, in that state. We no longer have to do that because now the frequency of the planet, the planet's actually emanating that altogether but it's, uh, it's an empowered state. It's not this blissy, tripped out kind of thing. And for the love of all that is holy, please stay away from the substances right now. You really need to allow the natural, organic, pure, true ascensions, my highest advice, the natural, pure, organic ascension to unfold in this now. It's beautiful what's occurring with us right now. But the bliss and the balance, you know, it's, it's different. You're not going to feel like you did a year ago. You're not going to be able to do what you were doing a year ago without a, a, some kind of struggle if you're trying to push it to, I, I want to be in the state of consciousness that I was last year or earlier this year. It's not going to happen. Those timelines are dropping away. You're going to see them dissolving from your own life stream. Embrace the bliss. That is 5D, 9D, 12D, whatever numbers you want to put on it. It's a state of consciousness. It's consistent, unconditional love. And you're going to have to parent your body and your thoughts and your emotions, your mindset through all of this so that you can fully embrace that as that's your baseline, is unconditional love. And for some people, it feels like a lack of emotion because the stronger emotions aren't there. You don't get the stickiness of the stronger emotions. It is what it is. Right now, breathe, meditate, do all of your ascension practices to maintain that as your key thing. You're feeling source coming back to you. And it's not this like super crazy, powerful, light warrior kind of thing. Completely different state of consciousness. So embrace it, embrace the flow. And if you need further direction on that, you know, visit the my website for all the articles that have been written about that. Or even the timeline webinar would help. Uh, th this is an interesting question and I've been asked it a lot. Why are you speaking at Dimensions of Disclosure? Because I was invited. 
uh, and <laughs> I looked at uh, the schedule and could, could use some, some extra women, so yes. Um, yeah, because I was invited. Because after I spoke at Sedona Cosmic Awakening, um, it, it just it unlocked a, a lot of different things. I haven't talked a lot about my contact experiences or my experiences on Mount Shasta. And the moment I did, it was just like all these different things aligned for my journey. So, um, so there. Uh, and it, it's a wonderful group of people. And I'm happy to bring in the divine feminine aspect, if you want to call it that. Uh, since I'm incarnated as a woman right now, might as well. Uh, make the most of it and bring some of that divine feminine energy uh, into the conference. I'm not on the main stage. You won't catch me live streamed. I'm on the secondary stage second uh, on Saturday morning, 8.30 to 10. I would love for as much of the tribe to show up and uh, show your support as possible. That would be wonderful to see you there live in person. Um, and kind of support the gatekeeper <laughs> conversation and that level of spiritual uh, disclosure. I had a couple of stray questions come in about uh, David Wilcock and Corey Good um, themselves. So I suppose I should address that now. Um, you know, people just asking, are they real? <laughs> yes. They're real people. Um, I, I met David for the first time uh, in April in Sedona, and I don't know, we hugged, said hello, smiled, lovely energy. Um, I don't, I, I don't experience malice or judgment any longer. So, uh, you guys have whatever you have on your own agenda. You're gonna have to look into your own heart, um, and it, that. that applies to everyone you know way showers and and people who are who are in the public or your politicians they are not responsible for your reaction to them you are and the same with the questions about Corey good is Corey <laughs> I love this question is Corey good a CIA agent um, Here's my, my highest answer. My, my highest answer in this moment is, who cares? Honestly, what does it have to do with your journey? Um, it, secondly, I have not met the man in the physical. I've met him in the astral. I don't feel any malice or any judgment any longer. I have, I'm looking at this. You have to look at it. For those of you who are going through embodiment, you understand this. You have the higher perspective. You have to apply multidimensionality to everything. Like when Corey first started coming on, on David's show back when he was on Gaia, I was pacing the floor going, what is this? Because it was all of our, uh, all of the, the intel and the stories and some of the stuff that I had only shared with my Ascension Path class in the Q&A sessions was suddenly being paraded <laughs> out uh, through this man who was talking about secret space program and and uh, beings that a lot of us were seeing were like, what is this? What is this? And it was just triggering my, my own thing of the divine feminine going, wait a minute, are they just gonna take all of our intel and just feed it through this guy? Like what's going on? Because it was like so accurate and so uh, aligned with what we had been talking about for a decade or so, like well, way before there was a Corey Good, all, all of that stuff, talking about the galactic uh, 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 alliances and stepping down the frequencies and we call the sun Solaris and not soul. It was just like a little, it was like a little too accurate. So for me, it was just kind of like, I just asked my higher levels directly, my divine entourage directly, what is this? Uh, when that first started presenting and they were like, calm down. <laughs> it has to come through a man. It has to come through a man from the military. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, my divine feminine had to like take it down a notch. Like, okay, they just need to, you have to look at the bigger picture, um, the higher perspective of disseminating the information that, um, you know, myself and a lot of other, a lot of other countless other channels had been delivering 
that were not as um, glamorous or, uh, or not glamorous, but um, as, uh, as, as open as people would be if it came through somebody who was from the military side of things and definitely from a man because there are a lot of people, believe it or not, there's a lot of people on the planet who would never listen <laughs> to a female channel ever. You know, they, they only resonate with stuff that comes through even male channels, let alone somebody who came from the military. So that's, you know, don't, don't judge the instrument. You gotta look at the bigger picture of all of that stuff getting channeled through um, David and his interviews and Corey. It is what it is. You gotta look at the bigger perspective of timelines, ascension timelines, and how all of that information now, you know, just the disclosure community as well has shifted, is shifting now away from the kind of constant re-examination of the past and all, all the ancient alien stuff, no judgment. It is what it is. Some people are at that stage of their journey. But when you look at the collective higher trajectory, all that stuff needed to be disclosed in, in a certain way, in a certain fashion, and if the people are not paying attention to it coming through female channels or other channels or the, the, the stuff that we've been resonating with and working on for decades, you know, first and second waivers, just working on all this stuff for decades. Um, if one person or two people can come forward and start disseminating that information in a much faster way, we just need to keep up with the timeline shift. We need to keep up with the division of worlds. We need to uh, accelerate all of that. So I really don't care or carry whether or not uh, Corey is real. I mean, he's a real person, but it's, uh, it, it really doesn't matter to me. I have nothing but love, deep, unconditional love and respect for all of my brothers and sisters who do this kind of work. It is not easy to be a way shower who has come up through the ranks, through all, all these decades of judgment and persecution and everything else. It's, you know, and that's part of the mastery journey. You know, if you look at the, the cycle of mastery, that's one of your steps is like all your friends denying they even know you, all that stuff comes with the path of mastery. It is what it is. So we just do it in a more public way way. So I honor all of my brothers and sisters who have the, the ovaries and the cojones to turn on the camera and actually um, deliver whatever it is that they have to deliver, whatever the piece of the puzzle is. And that information, whether it's genuinely coming through Corey or whether it's genuinely coming through the whatever, it just doesn't matter. You have to look at the higher perspective the multi-dimensional perspective of what that uh, vehicle, not Corey as a person, but what the, um, what the piece of the puzzle, as far as the, the trajectories of the collective uh, are, are, are on, what it, what it delivers to kind of accelerate that conversation. It really took off. And it also is a fine lesson for all of the the, the gatekeepers, the channels, the light workers, everybody who's been towing the line all the time, you have to, it also taught, taught a, a lot of you how to be in neutrality about everything in the way that it presents. You know, there's the same thing that's going on with the, with the, the government and, and the people who have been put in roles of purpose, on purpose, in order to accelerate the dissolvement of duality, in order to accelerate the dissolvement of lower timelines and lesser agendas. Not much is as it appears right now. We've been saying that for a long time. Again, you gotta go back and, and take a look at a lot of that intel and a lot of those articles and conversations to try to grok what's going on right now. If you think that things are exactly as they appear or there's judgment or smear campaigns or whatever being put against other people, it's just an acceleration of ousting all of this 
from our collective consciousness as well as your own personal life stream. So a lot of light workers had to take a look at their own personal judgments coming up and it's still happening, especially with the, the government stuff and the stuff that's like for, for me as a, a contactee and a liaison for a lot of what happens at that brotherhood, sisterhood level. Goodness, it's, um, to, to, I mean, it's brilliant. It's really brilliant the way it's unfolding right now. But you can't look at some of the representatives of those different factions of, uh, of what's going on. They are playing their roles to the, to the T right now. My goodness, really just playing the role and, and towing the line on behalf of the collective ascension. So try not to judge, beloveds. And again, if you can stay in divine neutrality, one of the highest things I teach, strongest mastery skills you can embrace is divine neutrality through all of this. That doesn't mean you don't care. It means you don't carry. If you're not swayed in one direction or the other, you can have that discernment. You can always look from the heart, it's that eye of the storm technique. Go back and revisit the blogs. Eye of the storm. You gotta stay in the center, in the calm, knowing that you are source, knowing that you are God, knowing that all is well, and that all is love, and everything else is part of the illusion in these lower densities. So if we can stay there, huh? <laughs> there's the doorbell saying, time to go. I love you all. I love you. I bless you. I thank you. <laughs>